Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to the Insider Insight Show. I'm honored to have back with me someone I consider a very dear friend and someone who is an incredibly courageous patriot. A little background on my friend Patrick Byrne. He's a truly multidimensional figure and individual. Uh, Patrick, many people know him as the CEO founder of Overstock.com. Other folks know Patrick as a, a person who actually uh, pretty much hides the fact that he has a PhD from Stanford. Uh, incredibly well-educated individual and, and, and transformative figure. In addition, most people that attain the billionaire status sit on their hands and uh, feet, if you will, head out at the beach. Not Pat. He took on Wall Street, took on their corruption, helped every person who has a penny in the stock market or in a 401k or in a retirement plan, took them on, exposed them, and then, if that wasn't enough, of late, as, you've out, as we've outlined in our two previous interviews with Pat in the past month, Pat just realized, wait a minute, being an IT guru, there are problems with this ele elections in the past and what's coming up in November, assembled a team of IT forensic experts, analyzed what happened in the past, were there monitoring what happened in, in, on November 3rd, and had the courage to come forward and speak about, and, and this platform on a number of other platforms, what they found and what they're doing. It's my honor to welcome Pat, my friend Patrick Byrne. Pat, welcome back to the Insider Insight Show. Dave, and how kind of you to notice, you know, very few people have connected all the dots that you've connected in my career and even understand what I did on Wall Street and understand it wasn't about my own company and things like that. That's all the spin they put on it. It absolutely was because I knew what the goons were doing to America. So thank you for your nice introduction. Well, the goons are doing it again to America, Pat. Yeah. And you're one of the very few people, along with General Flynn and Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood and a number of others, handful, Peter Navarro and the like, that are calling the goons on the carpet. So let's get right down to it, Pat. Sidney and Mike are in the next. I'm in a suite. They're in my living room. So we don't want to stay too long because they're waiting for me to finish. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, give, they, give them my best. I, they're, they're, I consider both of them my friends as well. I will do so. They speak well of you. So, okay, well, well, that's nice. So, no, Pat, let's let's hit this hard because one of the one of the concerns of not just myself, but our, our listeners in all fifty states and in one hundred and twenty countries that go to listen to our show every every day, Pat. One of the concerns is is the president is not being served well by those immediately around them. And educate our listeners about the meeting that General Flynn, Sidney Powell, and yourself had with the president in the Oval Office this past Friday, December eighteenth. I will do so. And I want to remind people, it is bad etiquette. You're not supposed to go in the White House. And what mm. happens in the White House stays in the White House. You're not supposed. However, 12 hours after we walked out, another participant in the meeting leaked the contents of the meeting and lied about it in an effort to undermine the president. And if he can lie about it, then, and this is the general counsel did the leak. He leaked to general counsel's Pat Cipollone and his his go-to journalist is Maggie Haberman at the New York Times, and he leaked and lied about what happened. So I figure it's only right, you know, I'm breaking etiquette too, but I'm going to come out and tell the truth. Yeah, set the record the straight. And I'm going to hide behind this pussified, pardon me, but <laughs> uh, anonymous sources stuff. I'm putting my name on it, my face. The New York Times published a lie. It was a fabrication. There was no discussion of using the military to impose martial law or... Uh, Insurrection Act or anything like that. That's pure fabrication. So, so that, you were, that, that meeting was four and a half hours, Pat. And yeah. tell me if I'm wrong. It started in the Oval Office. It went to the cabinet room and ended up in the private residence. That's correct. That's correct. And it, it uh, and Rudy came in after about two hours and Mark Meadows was on the phone. And then he came in personally and lasted until about 12, 12, 10 at night. Uh, the president served lovely. We had Swedish meatballs brought up. You know, it's uh, anyway. It, he's one first. He's a wonderful man. He's a wonderful man. As you know, I did not vote for him, but I uh, my whole feelings about him changed. He's not at all as the media portrays. He's a wonderful, gentle. He's way too kind. I finally told him at one point, sir, CEO to CEO, I'd be firing these guys on the spot. His own lawyers were yelling at him and they're lying, there are a dozen options or half a dozen options that the president has. Let's say there's a dozen options and with each passing day, one of them is disappearing. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe a bit poetic, but that's about right. Everything that gets discussed, his lawyers led by his general counsel are immediately in the mode of, oh no, you can't do that, no, you can't do that. And then they caucus and try to figure out why the answer is no. But their answer is no to everything. Their entire answer to President Trump about having had this 
election at a landslide victory stolen from him, their entire answer is more is lie back and think of England. Their entire answer is just take it. You can do nothing. That's really what their answer is. And any attempt to have a civilized discussion about the plethora of alternatives that say otherwise is met with, oh, no, you can't do that. You can't. Oh, that might not work. Oh, no. If you did that, oh, that might hurt your reputation in the press. Oh, you know, it's silly. It's childish. And I don't want to say much about what he said, but I can tell you he he sees what shit they are. He turned to me several times and said, can you see what I have to put up with? Can you imagine what I would have been able to get done in these four years if I didn't have, you know, he actually said, Patrick, my whole life I've had the best lawyers. People call me from all over the world to ask me what lawyer do I use on this? What do I use on that? I've never had such terrible lawyering as I've had here in the White House. It's This is what I've been putting up with for four years. Can you imagine what I could have got done if I'd had some real lawyers? All they want to do is submarine them. I think, what, well, one of them actually left that night and took a job for 10 times the pay, was mentioned to me. There you go. Uh, it's all he, about the dough. All about the, the prestige, money, all about the, the cocktail parties. It's the socialite parties. Yeah, yeah. The word has gotten out in Washington, get the president to concede, and if you don't do that, there's nothing for you afterwards. But if you do, there's jobs for you at Sullivan and Cromwell and uh, Scadden Arps. And there's, you know, you're going to be invited to Baldur's Roll for the Christmas party and the right country clubs and all this. And the leaders within the White House are telling the troops, just get the president to concede. And at one point I said that and the president was shocked and said, who he was. I'm not I, I shouldn't say much about what he said, but he said, who who said that? And I said, one name I keep hearing is Pat Cipollone, and the, I was standing right behind me. And I don't. And Sydney, I mean, it t- turned into quite a brouhaha, almost turned into a fist fight. Uh, uh, Flynn at one point stood up on his feet because these three lawyers were standing, and S- Flynn stood up and said, "You know, like let's start with something simple here. D- do you see? You, you guys at least see that the president actually did win on November third, right?" And let's, you know, he was going to say, let's start there and, pro, you know, then yeah. his next let's, thing. Let's, well, let's start we... a common ground and work, work from there. Yeah. Right. And yeah. their answer was they all looked down and put their toe in the dirt and hemmed and hawed. And nobody could even give a straight answer to that. Oh, that's actually, when the president said, do you see what I have to put up with here? All I do, all, all the, Pat, at least these guys want to fight for me. At least these guys have options. Yeah. You don't right. even want to fight. You're just so it was terrible. And Pat Cipollone is the guy who went, the, not only did he leak the story, which is the president's lawyer or general counsel, the White House general counsel is inappropriate. He leaked a lie about it. He leaked that we were in there talking about martial law and insurrection act. And that was a fabrication, not even twisting. That was a fabrication. Pat. So you have the White House general counsel fat, not only leaking to the New York Times, but when he leaks, he's fabricating things. So uh, the president should fire them on the spot. I can tell you, the president would win. I'll give you something that if he did, I think the chance is about 80 to 90 percent that on January 20th, he'd be sworn in for a second term. And that would be sign a document that makes Sidney Powell special counsel mm-hmm. and, and Mike, Mike Flynn. I don't want to disparage Mark Meadows. I have, Mark Meadows seems like a very nice gentleman. He's a nice southern gentleman. You need a street fighter, Pat. Yeah, you need a Mike Flynn. You need a guy from, you need Flynn. Uh, Meadows is not a, as they say in The Godfather, as Michael says to Tom Hagen, <laughs> you're not a wartime consigliere. Mark Meadows is not a wartime consigliere. And who knows what, you know, who knows what's being dangled out to him, what jobs at, 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 law, at law firms or lobbying firms. If, as long as you get the president to go smoothly. I finally said to the president, you know, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, I can tell you, you are not, I actually said this fairly early on. I said, you, as you know, sir, I've been swimming around in Washington for two months now. I can tell you're being poorly served by mm-hmm. your administration and by your people, your leaders. And they, the leaders in your White House are telling people b- below them, just get the president to concede. And the president was shocked and said, it was like, really? Who's de-? And I, I was shocked that he was shocked. And I said, <laughs> don't you know, half of your White House is is has gotten the message half of the white house and has gotten the message just get the president to concede i can pull people in here right now who will come in and confirm you know he 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 believed me he knows and that's when i told him it's this guy pat cipollone so pa- so patrick why is he still there why is cipollone still there 
that if I had, so I liked Mr. Trump much more than I had imagined I would from the way he's presented in the press. He's a wonderful gentleman. I, he's much different than, than, uh, than he is both in public appearances and as the press portrays him. He's a very kind, thoughtful, he's also wicked smart. Let yep. me tell you, there are a few people that I meet with that I that I'm watching them put facts together and draw and conclude and, and see them doing it as quicker. I know this sounds cocky, but as quick or more quickly than I, he was one of them. I mean, I spend time with Buffett. When I'm with Buffett, I can tell you know, you can just see how smart the guy is, how quickly he gets jokes, how quickly he staples things together that are separated in the mm-hmm. conversation by 20 minutes, things like this. Buffett was doing it. I mean, Trump was doing it just like that. He's smart very smart guy. I don't mean to be condescending, but he, uh, one, his stock went up with me so much. And one is he's much smarter than I had any idea. And he's much smarter than the people around him. He's too nice. And if he, if I, if he had a, a tragic flaw, what I can tell you is he's really quite a nice guy. There were moments, you know, the, the lawyers at one point were yelling at him. Oh. There, at one point, Flynn and I were on our feet together, shoulder to shoulder facing these three lawyers. If they had been one, I really had I had already like programmed myself. If that guy puts his face one inch closer towards me, I'm going to bitch slap this guy. The guy, Mr. Pre- President Trump said at the end of this, the two hours we were in the Oval Office and the, we shoot the lawyers out. He said, you know, there hasn't been a meeting like this in 200 years in the Oval Office. It was really damn close to fistfights. They, between the three lawyers and Flynn and I and Sydney, Sydney's a ball buster. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, she, she stood up to them. And she at one point they were like they were I forget what they were. But, you know, they were they said terrible things to Sydney, terrible things and lies. And they said, you've had 50 cases and they've all been thrown out. Oh, that. No, no. Yeah, they said that. That's that's. That, 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 that's globalist talking points. Those are deep state globalist talking points. Okay, no evidence has been presented in a court. Right. The White House general counsel said to Trump, don't listen to her. She's had 50 cases filed and all of them have been thrown out. So that's, an, that's a very good illustration of the level of intellectual dishonesty that's occurring from his advisors towards him. Pat, what was said by you, General Flynn, and Sidney that got those deep state operatives, that's essentially what they are, what, what triggered them that they started yelling at the president? That we said that you should fight on and we'll win this. Okay. Now, that's Pat, my here's my experience in D.C. I've been there, did stuff, 88, you know when what? Reagan brought I me in and helped. Mention, it's extremely bad etiquette for oh. me to be reporting on what went on in the Oval Office. But if these oh. are going to lie about it through leaks to the press, right. I'm going to tell the truth to Ab- the public. Absolutely, Pat. And you know what? I, I, I've spent time in D.C. since 88 when Reagan brought me there in health care policy. And here's what I found. When people go off like that, when they trigger and start yelling, it means it's more than they just have a disagreement. They're owned. They are owned. It's not just going to the cocktail party. There is somebody behind them that owns them that's selling somebody out. And in this case, they're selling the president out. Who owns these guys, Pat? I bet you you know. You have an well, idea. Well, I'm sh- I know that it's been, you know, I don't I'm not in their emails, but uh-huh. or their their but my, it was clear to me that they were all owned. It was Flynn and I started looking at each other and saying, this is surreal. What we're experiencing, Mr. President, this right. is surreal. We've, I've never seen anything like it. Right. That they were, they were so disrespectful to him personally, yeah. which means disrespecting the presidency, which means disrespecting the entire the United States. You know, if I'd been in a, I was so close to taking a poke at one of these guys I figured it wouldn't help our cause. I couldn't believe that this was going on in the Oval Office, how they are uh, impolite to him and shouted at the president, not just at Sidney and Mike and me. I don't care about me, but Sidney. The other thing is they're sexist. If you in a in a corporate, I mean, they were so condescending. There was another lawyer there with one of Sidney's people. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she wants her name involved. So I leave her name. A young woman, terrific lawyer, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. bright. I know who you're talking about. They were so condescending to that girl, to that woman, and to Sydney. These three uh, lawyers. If you were like that in a corporate environment mm. these days, You're you'd done. have a class action suit like that. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe how impolite they were to these women, and they're clearly total sexist. Uh, uh, that they're, so. I mean, it was really one of the most unpleasant meetings of my life. That and it's and it was like being in the 50s, the way these men were treating the two women and just 
brushing them off and you're and that but literally they were saying they kept they rather than have a substantive discussion right their answer to things that sydney would say would be things like well she's filed 50 cases uh. and not one of them they've all gone thrown out which is you know explain why that's a lie dave explain oh. to your audience why first that's of all None of the cases, they've all been thrown out on process issues. There have never been one case that's been thrown out on the merits. The evidence has never been heard in any Correct. state court, federal court, Supreme Court. And it's, she didn't file those 50 no. cases. No. There are people in Nevada and Pennsylvania. That's and, right. And the courts say, oh, you don't have standing. So they get thrown out. None Correct. of it has anything to do, you're right, with evidence or nope. with Sidney Powell. No. So it's, that's the level of deception and mm. dishonesty and low integrity that is running the discourse in the Oval Office. And Trump, President Trump was like, do you see what I have to deal with, what I've had to deal with for four years from these people? This is, they're the worst lawyers. I have no idea why he didn't fire them right there. They were so rude. Well, that's my concern. Why, why aren't they, they, they should be fired by now. They should be gone. Yeah, I, oh, I think so. But in well, fact, Sydney said, "Go ahead." Sydney said, it, "And none of this is behind people's back. We're not the pussified no. wa wa Washington types who behind people's back." Sydney said, "You fire them now. Make me general counsel. But we won't miss a beat because they were basically threatening." He was saying, "I'm like, you don't need me if you're gonna. You need me." And she said, Go, "And well, he did storm out a couple times, slamming the door of the Oval Office." Who did the? Uh, Pat Chipolone. Oh, oh okay, okay. And his lawyers did. Yeah. Right. And but, and Sydney said right in front of them, fire them right now and we won't miss a beat. I'll take over. I can tell you, if he really wants to win, I think I would put his odds at 80 to 90 percent if he made Mike Flynn the general counsel right. and Sydney Powell the, spe the special counsel. And at the end of this four and a half Mike hours, Flynn, yeah. at the end of this four and a half hour meeting where you transform from the Oval Office to the cabinet room to the Swedish meatballs to the private residence, when you left... How did you feel? We were walking on, on air because the President Trump had agreed to do what we asked. He agreed there. He agreed in uh, probably the 30 minute mark of the four hour. And then the rest of the four hours was his own staff trying to talk him out of it, to which he had a brilliant answer, which and his brilliant answer to all their attempts to talk him out is, well, what's your plan? <laughs> and that's where they say, uh, no, we can't really do anything. We can't. So it was completely done, done and done. Sidney Powell was, he had decided to make her White House special counsel and give her a security clearance. Yep. Then the next day she calls in to Mark Meadows on Saturday and says, well, I'm gonna need my office at the White House. And Mark Meadows tells her, uh, we can't really get you an office, I don't think. And he says, she says, well, well okay, then give me a badge so I can come right. back and forth. Right. And Mark Meadows says, uh, we don't really think we can get you a badge either. So they were just disregarding the orders of the president.